Hey all, welcome to Immortal Bot. So you just picked up your Spitting Cobra case discriminator system. And if you bought a complete system because you didn't already own a DBoss or you're buying a brand new set for another machine, uh, the first thing you'll find in the box when you open it up is the interface box. Uh, if you already own a Diamondback, a DBoss, uh, unless you'll recognize this box, uh, Diamondback fits to one side, Spitting Cobra to the other, so you'll have one of these. If you already, if you made a mistake, excuse me, if you made a mistake and you were trying to buy Spitting Cobra and you already ordered a DBoss and you bought the whole kit, contact us and we can refund you the, and have you ship the interface box back to us and we'll refund you the cost of the interface box uh, back to you because so you, you only need um, the sensor head that plugs in the other side. Next thing you'll find in the box is the Y cable to interface to the, uh, the ammo bot. Uh, this one side, uh, these are keyed so you can't mess these up when you insert them. And we'll show you that basically there's a key inside and the key way only plugs in one way and then lock the collar down. Uh, the connectors, one side goes to the sensor and the other side goes to other accessories like the extractor. So for now you'll plug one side of the extractor and one side to the um, Amobot control box on the pigtail in the center on a Rev3 uh, and it, it's its own, its own on the Rev3 and it comes off of the cable that goes over to uh, the um, rotary encoder on the Rev2. So you'll see this connector on the Amobot. Next part will be the mount. So the mount, we, uh, we worked very closely with uh, Ammo Brass and you we're using the base of the mount is their uh, spent primer shoot system that they put together it's probably the strongest one i've seen uh, that is not made out of metal um, he's been very they're very very tough very strong this is larger diameter than the normal ones that are out there so you'll either have to put some heat on the existing tube you have and expand it or go out and pick up a new tube we do not include a tube for this as most people already have tubes hooked up um, to their uh, ammo bots. So the mount, uh, very simple. Uh, this is like the rest of everything. It's a single screw to mount this in the system, and we'll show you that when we go and mount it up. So you get two things for the price of one. You get a drop shoot, and you also get the detect the uh, the spinning cobra. Next thing in the box is the uh, the sensor heads connector cable. Again, same kind of connector here. It's keyed off so it only fits in one way. It will fit in every one of the ports in the box. Make sure you put it on the Spitting Cobra. It is also color-coded. There's a red and a green end on these things. And you, the reason why is the sensor has the same pigtails, red and green. Um, we decided to pigtail this and not wire it directly in for, uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, one, trying to bring the heavier cable into this area, into this small little piece, and keep it from being interfered with uh, was a little bit more difficult. So we decided to go with the pigtails. You can just plug it in and off. It also allows you to disconnect them from the system without having to, dis to take the cable off of the box. If you decide to shut this off because uh, you don't need it, you can just disconnect these connectors and leave it mounted on the machine. When you pull it out of the pink static anti-stat bag, uh, just take a quick look at it. Make sure these eyes are clear as far as there's no debris in there. There's nothing obstructing them. If there is, take a soft brush and brush it out. Don't put anything hard in there. You don't want to scratch either one of those little eyes in each one of these ports because you know, then it won't work right. But uh, nice and small and compact. Um, took a lot of work to figure out these angles um, across the board from both the mount and the angles as well here so that this would work uh, in the space that provided. And you'll see when we do the installation how tight it can be in the space. You will have to use a small nut. The nuts, um, this uh, this screw and nut are included and they'll be on the head like this when you pull out of the bag. If you happen to lose this nut, this is a 1032, a number 1032 uh, nut that you're going to need and you want to find one that's thin. Um, that's about as much as it's going to stick out completely. You're not going to drive this thing all the way across when it's mounted. 
and it needs to be thin because of everything that's moving around right in this space when it's mounted up. And you'll see that when we do the installation here in a minute. So let's uh, take this all over to one of the machines and get it up and running. Okay, installation is pretty easy, and we'll show you a couple of easier steps. So to start off, take your mount and your sensor head, and pull the screw off the sensor head. Slide it on the mount. Put the screw and the nut on. And it's much easier to do this right now instead of when you're down in here trying to put it all together. It's a little bit easier to do it right now. And I'll set it about halfway up. Snug it. Don't you gotta gotta crank it, just snug it so it doesn't move a whole lot. Alright. Now like I said before, I've taken heat. This is a uh, 3 8 by half inch uh, drop tube. Just a little heat applied to that and then shaped, pushed on, and a nice snug fit. Doesn't need anything to clamp it on. Just set it into position. Use that uh, the screw that comes with it, with the uh, 1050 that holds on that bracket. Uh, the catch bracket right there. Just take the same screw and get your 1 8 hex. Fit it through. Screw it down. You don't need to crank it to death. Make sure it's level first. There we go. Just snug it so it's solid in there. You don't have to try to compress it. And then you're done with that part. Next part is real easy. Now you can route uh, this cable in front of a drop chute or a bin or whatever you have or you can run around it. I've got this one routed down and around and captured by this Velcro as it comes under. All you want to do is make sure that the, this part of the press doesn't snag it and pull it down and you want to make sure it's clear of the handle when the handle comes up and down. So just make sure it's just clear of this area right in here and route it however it makes sense to you to route it. Uh, like I said, I've got mine routed underneath the bracket, underneath the drop chute, and then around. And you can see it pops out up over here to go to the back. So if you've never installed a DBoss, uh, what you can do is take the interface box. Uh, this is for those of you who don't have a DBoss already. Just take the interface box that came with your uh, Spitting Cobra. Right here where it says Control Cables, take the Y cable, insert... Lock it down. And however you ran this cable here, insert that one to where it says Spitting Cobra. Lock it down. Okay. Set that right here. All right, with these cables, they're color-coded. And as you can see, green to green. They only fit on one way. And red to red. That's why we use this cable. Uh, it's genderless or hermaphroditic is the other term that they call for this because it's both male and female in the way it's set up. All right. Let me... The rest is pretty easy. So you just come to the back. This is a Rev 2. If you have a Rev 3, uh, this will be an individual cable that comes out of the center port. On the Rev 2, this is the cable that goes to the uh, rotary encoder. You'll see the same connector that you find on the Y cable. Just plug one side into that cable. And if you have an extractor, you'll see the other cable there. You just plug this into the extractor. All right, it is completely installed and ready to go. I'll lay it here off to the side, out of the way. And when you turn on the control box, you will see Scud found. So the scud is up and running and found and is ready to go. Now uh, we'll cut over to the other machine over here and okay, show you how to are all installed. You need to get it aligned so it'll work. So we're going to use a triplet today, the 380, the 9, and the 38 Super, so that you can see all the measurements at once. So this is very easy. First thing we're going to do is get these off the machine. Pull the pin, grab the 9 mil case, and put it in. This is the target case. This is the one I want. This is the one I want to get aligned first. 
come over to the box, put it in test mode by holding the yellow and green, letting the yellow off and holding the green down until it says test mode on the screen. All right, now press the home switch back here and you'll start to see these numbers come up. So the target number here is the MB number. It needs to be 45 or less. As you can see here, it's in 42, 44, 43. So it's less, and the SC number exceeds 51. We want that. The target number is MB, and that's the target case you want. The SC number is the case exceeding the height of the target case. So this one's still a little aligned, a little off. Let's see, 42, 42, 42, 42. All right, that looks good. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is take the 380 case, the short case, and put it in there. Hit the button and the 380 case is well beyond 45 here so the mb number exceeds 45 and the sc number exceeds 51 so that would force it to go to the extractor and be kicked off uh, then take the tall case put the tall case in there hit the button and you see both of those numbers uh, mb's inside of 45 and sc's inside of 51 which is your magic numbers so that one looks good. And one final check just to make sure we didn't knock anything out of alignment. Take the nine mil. Where's that nine? There's the nine. Put the nine mil back in there. Take a look at the nine. And there we go. Everything is still aligned the way it's supposed to be. Now, if you need to, you just make slight adjustments here. You don't have to move much because we're talking, there's only a couple of millimeters difference in these cases for the most part. So you don't have to move it a whole lot to get it aligned. It can be a little frustrating when you're first figuring out how to learn how to do this, but after you've done it a couple of times, it'll take no time at all. It takes me zero time to get these things set up, switching between calibers now. It's just a little bit of learning curve uh, to figure out how to get all three aligned at once. All right, we've got a couple of nines in there. Let's drop in the 38. Super. Got a nine. That's a nine. Uh, that's 380. All right, put 380 in there. Let's see. Reset the box. And let her run. There. So I'd boot them. And it booted a 9 off of there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that pocket's got a little problem. So that was the case. Uh, the pocket probe ejected that one. You can see the, the ding in that edge of that pocket that caused the pocket probe to stop. But uh, there's the 9, or the 38 Super, and the 380. So you see how it runs around the machine, keeps going and uh, let you know if there's a problem uh, it'll start kicking that brass out uh, if you notice that if you start hearing that extractor kick and kick and kick and kick and kick um, you probably need to check to make sure that a 380 or another case hasn't turned sideways inside of the uh, plunger which they tend to do the 380s when they get some pressure with a bunch of brass on top of it have a tendency to fall over and get turned sideways and get stuck in there so you'll hear that extractor kick and kick and kick. Uh, that, that's a good indication you need to come back and check and see what's going on up here. Or it means that this is empty and you need to check out your uh, case. But if you have the DBOSS on there on the ninth stroke anyway, it'll stop the machine. If it doesn't see anything pass around the, the shell plate. So <clears throat> you know how to get a hold of us. Uh, Messenger uh, on Facebook, uh, the AmmoBot groups, good way to get a hold of us. The Immortal Bot um, Facebook page. Uh, you can email us at sales at immortalbot.com or sales at immortalarms.com. Uh, if you have our number to call, but if you call, you'll probably get voicemail, and we will return your call uh, as soon as we get a chance. It gets pretty busy around here, so we don't always get to the phones right away. So, as the saying goes, come get loaded by loading smarter with an ammo bot. <laughs>